what's up guys i just came back from e3 so if i look dead tired it's because i am big three hour time difference so after sleeping in i finally got to review what nintendo has to offer and that's what this video is about once more for the people in the back i only talk about the video games that caught my attention during these press conferences so without further ado let's see what nintendo's got to offer i'm i'm working on my jingles First, we have the highly anticipated Xenoblade Chronicles 2 coming out for the Nintendo Switch this holiday. They're still saying this holiday, so you know what? This holiday, let's, let's see if they can keep their promise. And in addition to this holiday, it's also a global release. So we have Rex the main character and Pyra, who as we all guessed is essentially his blade. While the world looks expansive and beautiful as ever, I'm glad they're focusing more on the narrative rather than exploration. Although I feel like those two aspects could easily marry one another. Now we saw some great gameplay and Xenoblade Chronicles 2 is sticking with the traditional auto attacking and cooldown system. And made better with shortcut menus to switch between blades. Yes, instead of switching weapons per se, you're switching blades. Who power up the driver's weapons? Blades are seen as either attack, tank, or healer, and you can smoothly transition blades as you battle. You can see the links between drivers, the one using the blade, and the blade during battle. Turning our attention to the environment, Titans are back, and you'll be exploring each and every one of them. Night and day cycles, discovering landmarks, these key features have returned. There's even a new element of rising and falling tides which can lead to new discoveries. I feel like they're really trying to kick up the environment. Or make it even harder to find places. We were then shown some Kirby, and I gotta say, I'm not really a Kirby fan. Love the character, the games never resonated with me, but after watching this trailer of like the vibrant and colorful world, I was like... I kind of want to play. And to be fair, Kirby's been doing that a lot to me lately, so I might just become a Kirby fan, y'all. Loving what the power-ups can do, the teamwork, the multiplayer action, so you know what? 2018, I might play some Kirby. No title yet, but you definitely got my attention. Metroid. Guys, I am so happy for you Metroid fans. You guys must be beaming, all right? Me, on the other hand, don't kill me. I've never played a Metroid game. And it's not that I don't want to, it's just Metroid never kind of weaved itself into my life, so I never got a chance to play it. And I did get the fan-made game, but once again, there's just so many games and not enough time to play them all, so maybe I'll pick up this one and this will be my first official Metroid game, and I can give you a clear perspective on what I think of Metroid. So if that's something you're interested in, definitely let me know, because I've never touched a Metroid game in my life. I know about it, know the characters, duh, never touched it. Whatever working title this Yoshi game is, looks amazing. Once again, just like Metroid, I've never played a Yoshi title. Not Yoshi's Island, Yoshi's Story, Yoshi's Woolly World, and not this, obviously. When I rewatched the little preview of this game, all I could think of was, damn, I want to play you. This Yoshi title gimmick is flipping the world around you, and it looks solid. Alas, another 2018 title in the works. <laughs> Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild DLC packs. While I am excited for the DLC, it's hard to get excited for the second one when the first one hasn't dropped yet. Because of other media outlets, we kind of already knew what the first DLC packed, which was new armor, trial of the sword, floating enemies, and so on. Again, it looks great, it's just we've seen it before. Now the second DLC is what I'm fucking hyped for. What I need Nintendo to do is let us play the past. What happened 100 years ago, before Zelda was fighting Ganon, before Link got KO'd. I wanna meet the champions and get to like directly interact with them because their interaction in Breath of the Wild was very brief. First DLC is set to release June 30th of this year. Second DLC is holiday 2017, all for 19.99. And this goes without saying, but yes, I'll buy it. And oh my God, the champion amiibo I am so excited for. I'm really happy that I got a closer look at them at E3. Ah yes, I have them all pre-ordered already. Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle. You ever look at a game and you're like, what the fuck is this? But as you keep looking at it, you warm up to it. Cause that's me. It's a tactical game. Apparently it's like XCOM games from what I've been told, but I've never played any of those. Still, this game is slowly gaining my attention. Mainly because the peach rabbit is taking a selfie, it just cracks me up every time. But really, I find this game is something I wouldn't buy, but I'd love to go over at a friend's house and play it with them. Coming August 29th, 2017. Mario Odyssey looks so damn good. 
The worlds look so inviting and colorful, combined with new night and day puzzles. And the new hat Mario wears, Cappy, just how you utilize the enemies you control, or just the hat in general for attacking. Everything this game shows says, hey, come join me for a once in a lifetime adventure, without looking like it's trying too hard. Honestly, everything about Mario Odyssey looks spectacular, and I'm really excited to see what new puzzles the hat controlling mechanic brings forth. But not only does this game incorporate new hat tricks, but outfits play a big role in Mario Odyssey as well. No longer is Mario limited to his 1981 classic red shirt and overalls, or Kigurumis, but brand new threads which help unlock new areas. Example being, a person won't let you inside a building unless you are a construction inspector, and if you look the look, you gain entry. With this game, they are really pushing the boundaries of Mario. It's no longer a run and jump game. This game really makes you want to suit up, pack your bags, and join video game's most beloved character on an epic odyssey. I look forward to it October 27th, 2017. You know, I'm really loving what Nintendo's doing with its larger series. Pushing boundaries and breaking traditional formulas with their larger series games. A prime example of this would be Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Most can agree that this is unlike any other Zelda game in the series. It's so captivating and unreal for those who have been long-term Legend of Zelda fans. Mario Odyssey, it's kind of the same deal. While it does stick to its core in platforming, it's no longer just running and jumping. It's not just pushing through levels to make it to the next world, rather to explore and revisit this new immersive land. All in all, Nintendo did an excellent job with new content, release dates, and expanding on new games that we know are coming. So those are my thoughts on Nintendo's E3 presentation, so let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Do you agree that Nintendo won? Or do you think Nintendo's kind of lackluster? I, I don't think anyone could think that about Nintendo, but I'm sure there's someone. What games are you excited for from Nintendo? I think out of all the games that are dropping this holiday season, I'm definitely gonna go for Mario Odyssey. There's JRPGs left and right, left and right, all around me. So I kind of want to breathe there and just play a platformer. A beautiful one at that. So Xenoblade, just hang in there a little while longer, I promise I'll get to you eventually. If you enjoyed this video, I have more convention videos for you to check out via the top box. And the bottom box is my Let's Play channel. Thank you so much for watching. Sorry. <laughs> Forgot my pants.